Hey friends, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is May. I'm a final year vet student and in this video, I sit down with Laura Turner virtually to talk about Liverpool Vet School and how she applied and her experience there. Let's get into it. So hello Laura, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, of course. I'm a fifth year at Liverpool University. Oh, sorry, I'm here with my dog who's going to probably annoy me. Oh, can I see <laughs> your dog? Hi. Bobby, come here. <laughs> come here, quick. Come on. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Hi! So, so cute! Yeah, she's gonna get in the way. Please, Aww, so cute. So jealous. I wish I had a dog. <laughs> so yeah, I'm in my fifth year at Liverpool. So how's it going? Are you still doing classes given COVID yeah. and everything? So at the moment, it kind of hasn't changed much for us. We're meant to start our rotations just at the end of fourth year. We yeah. sort of technically changed to fifth year. And we have six blocks of rotations. So two small, two farm and two equine. But because of everything that happened, and our first two blocks went online. So at first it was sort of large group teaching. It was kind of like going back to lectures, um, but all on teams, which wasn't the best, but completely understandable because they didn't have much time to get everything sorted. Like everything happened yeah. so quickly, they had to cancel our rotations. But then the second block was still online, but it was a lot more sort of, and we were all put into small groups, like five or six students. Um, and there were a lot of tutorials and sort of marked work. And okay. it just made it sort of, it still felt a bit like rotations and you were still getting individual feedback um, mm -hmm. but it just wasn't in person but now so in September we came back and we've just got a reduced practical course so we're still doing our six blocks but they're just four weeks each instead of six so so far it's going well we do rotations now in our household groups so we, okay. we sort of join in two or three households to reduce your contact with other people and obviously you have to wear masks and socially yeah. distance if possible okay that's good that you guys can do in-person stuff now okay so I guess let's rewind back to first year or like before first year when you're applying to Liverpool vet school why did you decide to choose Liverpool? Well originally I didn't apply to Liverpool my first time round because it just wasn't really on my radar I think I'd been to an open day but I just chose other unis my first time I applied to Nottingham, Bristol, Glasgow and Cambridge I interviewed at Glasgow and Cambridge but I didn't get any offers sadly oh. so I took a year out I worked in a supermarket as a supervisor which was an amazing experience and I worked full-time so I saved a load of money which was nice. really useful yeah and then it came time to apply again and I think I sort of wanted to change up slightly where I'd applied to at the time I was quite interested in going into equine practice when I graduated and Liverpool's got a great reputation yep. for equine so I think that's probably the main reason and then on the day that we had our interviews we had like a tour of the vet school and it was just a bit um, more in depth than the open day and that was when I realized actually I really like Liverpool the facilities are really good the staff seem really nice and the city is amazing. So yeah. Oh, nice. So so you applied second time and what kind of pre-university course did you do? I did A levels. I did four. So biology, chemistry, maths and physics. The entry requirement for Liverpool is three A's and one of them has to be biology. And then one of them has to be another science or okay. math. And then one of them can just be anything. So you basically yeah, you've got your two sciences to include biology. And then as long as you get three A level three A's overall then yeah, you've you've met the requirements for grades. Okay. And then what about the work experience? Because I remember that when I was researching Liverpool and everything, they required quite a lot of work experience. Is yeah. that right? <laughs> yeah. I think they have the highest requirements. And actually thinking back, I think that might have been another reason I didn't apply first year round because I didn't meet the requirements. Because I think they, before COVID, they required eight weeks. I think okay. mm -hmm. but I've had a look on the website today and with COVID they're just requiring five days in any animal related setting so it doesn't have to be a vet's it can be sort of an animal husbandry like kennels or, or something like that and they're not expecting any work experience from March this year onwards I don't think oh really okay fair enough I mean like it's gonna be quite hard to organize one week let alone eight weeks with COVID yeah. and everything yeah so, and also because you applied the second time, they don't penalize you for applying many times. It's possible to, to apply again. Yeah, I think, I'm not sure if the, because I think some of the universities have, you can't apply there twice, or maybe if you've oh, interviewed okay. there, you can't. But because I didn't apply to Liverpool in my first time round, ah, I see. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if that's the case, but definitely they don't have any problem with sort of applying when she have already applied like been rejected for vet school before yeah cool it's so cool that yeah you applied twice and yeah made it and you're in final year now that's amazing <laughs> yeah 
What are they looking for in personal statements? So I think the unique thing about Liverpool is that they don't read your personal statement. They don't take it into account. And I think this is because partly of the high work experience requirements, maybe because that's, I think a lot of what you talk about in your personal statement is normally your work experience. Yes. And there's a separate work experience form that you have to fill out. And then they just go mainly off interview. So yeah, that, that was something that I always remember about Liverpool. Cool. So about this interview, what type of interview is it? And how did your interview experience go? So we had the sort of multiple stations I think there were maybe sort of eight to ten mm-hmm. so each you sort of go around it's like speed dating um, <laughs> cool <laughs> a set or uh, interviewer at each station so that I think there were things about sort of vet meat ethics mm-hmm. animal yep. welfare. there might have been a drug calculation mm-hmm. there was a station about sort of your hobbies outside of outside of vet which is quite important that's a nice uh, one I like that <laughs> station yeah that was really nice I think it was focusing on how you sort of take time away from work and de-stress because that's yeah that's quite important Mm. um, skill I suppose it was quite nice because each five minute interview just felt like a fresh start so even if you'd messed up the one before you could kind of just think well it's a different person now and I don't need to worry I can just try again Mm -hmm. um it was definitely my favorite interview because I've interviewed at Glasgow Cambridge Surrey and Liverpool and Mm -hmm. it was it just felt like the nicest interview sort of most chilled out oh that's really good um I had a question but then now I forgot about it (laughs) (laughs) we'll we'll edit this part out Uh, okay yes the very important bit so what kind of tips or advice would you give people who are applying for Liverpool and like what kind of students they're looking for okay I think that's difficult I don't think they're really looking for any student sort of student in particular Mm -hmm. I suppose just quite a well-rounded person that won't just doesn't just live and breathe that and and sort of not do anything else they want to know that you've got hobbies and you've got other interests somebody that can talk through their thinking processes like in the interview they're not looking for just the right answer and I think the best thing to do is it sounds really weird but just sort of think out loud when you're yeah yeah Yeah. no I don't think it's weird at all and just say right I'm thinking this and this and this and just knowing that you've got the ability to sort of process things in a logical way I guess that works as well because when you work up a case you have to like think oh okay why are we doing this blood test because the patient is showing the signs blah 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 so I guess yeah it makes sense that they want us to have that skill so how big is your cohort I think we started off with about 150 maybe 140 mm-hmm. I think at the moment we're just under 130 it's quite um, big yeah and from what I understand like the cohort that they've just taken on is bigger so you have practicals from right from day one the first year focuses on normal structure and function so yeah what it says on the tin and we just do all our anatomy and physiology animal husbandry is quite a big part of the first year course and then i think we do a little bit of infectious diseases as well and epidemiology which you do in groups you have dissections in first year as part of your anatomy course which are obviously really useful you do them in groups we have new cadavers each dissection we we're not one of the unis where we sort of have one for the whole year really we have one for the whole year (laughs) yeah we just have the same one and then if like (laughs) You mess up in one dissection, that's it. You'll be like, oh great, I can't see anything anymore. I've removed all the muscles. <laughs> oh no, okay, that's really yeah. cool, yeah. Because you have such a big year as well, like you must have loads of cadavers. Um, but yeah, that's obviously a great part, of course. And we also have clinical skills from year one. You can practice things like suturing, knot tying, injection techniques, and mm-hmm. all those things on the models. It's quite good because Liverpool let us do our clinical EMS from first year. There's no requirement oh, sort of really? just to do three clinical and math move on in third year so it's quite nice to have the opportunity to practice your clinical skills because that's what you're going to sort of do on EMS as well I suppose and then in second year we revise all the anatomy from first year we also have our parasitology and disease mechanisms course it seems like such a long time ago I know <laughs> yeah um, and I think we do a bit of pathology third year is like pathology yeah that's all I remember just like constant lots of pathology and recognizing all the sort of gross pathology and histopath and then in fourth year there's like just a recap of everything but just in more detail you do it like a week block of say urinary or cardiovascular and you just have lectures on all species and the diseases and and treatment and pharmacology everything like that Mm -hmm. and then yeah and then fifth year is just rotation so just putting it into practice lecture free usually yes our last lecture is in february in fourth year and it's just so nice (laughs) Uh, do you do like one of those where everybody turns up in a costume or something yeah we Uh have like um, what, what we wanted to be if we weren't going to be a vet, I think. Yeah, and what did you so go as? I went as a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
really unimaginative. I was like, what what can I do that's quite easy to dress up as if you like kind of want wanted to do? You mean you didn't but, want yeah. to be a cowboy if you weren't a vet? <laughs> Maybe it was a bit of a pipe dream, a bit of a <laughs> <laughs> And so you mentioned that Liverpool has a reputation of having a really good equine teaching. Do you elaborate? Like, why why do they have that reputation? I think just because our equine hospital, um, our referral hospital, is really good. It's very just sort of well regarded. Like, I think when I talk to people, maybe not even in the veterinary world, but just the sort of horse world, and they're like, "Oh, we go to Liverpool. That's great if you like horses." And we have a lot of research that goes on there. A lot of great clinicians that work there, and then they come and lecture us as well. So it's good for that. How is student? Life like a bit about the social life in the city or nightlife. I mean, it doesn't exist now because of COVID, but I guess good to reminisce and talk about. <laughs> yeah. So obviously we have a load of societies. I didn't really get involved in too many of them. Like I dipped in and out of a couple, but I know a lot of my friends did. And we also have like our own vet societies, like vet sports, like netball and yeah. stuff, and which are you take a bit less seriously, I guess, than the uni ones. There's, there's definitely a lot to do. The city itself is just incredible. I think anyone you talk to that's been to Liverpool just falls in love with it. It's a sort of diverse place and everyone's so proud to be living in Liverpool or from Liverpool. Mm-hmm. There's so many sort of independent restaurants and bars and just activities that you can go and do. Amazing museums that are free, so it's great when your parents come up and you need to like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's really- we have the docks which are really beautiful like the big Albert mm. docks um, and it's, ni- it's nice to walk down like the campus is just a five minute walk from the city centre oh, so really? you're okay. really close to everything mm-hmm. um, but you still feel a little bit tucked away a little bit safe you know when you've just moved to a city coming from the countryside um, mm-hmm. it's a bit of a shock I had student accommodation that was sort of on campus but there is also some maybe like a 20 minute bus ride away they have yeah. like student villages some of the newer accommodation and yeah a lot of people People live there as well which is a bit quieter but there's still like you know a lot of students about so it's quite nice still at your Liverpool campus is it just the main campus with vets and like non-vet related degrees or do you have like a separate vet campus yeah it's just at the main campus for years one to three it's everyone so in my first year accommodation I had like a geography student a math student cool. a, a history student so it was it was great to meet people from other courses because I think sometimes it, it can be easy to just spend all your time with vets and yeah. to, you know like not meet anyone else so that little really bubble mm-hmm. exactly mm-hmm. the vet school doesn't really have much of its own lecture theatre space so they kind of spread about everywhere so it's quite nice that you'd always get to see different parts of campus mm-hmm. like unlike other courses where they'd always be in one building we sort of just float about and have our lectures all about the place which is quite nice and in your clinical years you have it more at the vet school then so we move out to the Wirral which is a lot quieter than Liverpool <laughs> <laughs> nice in its own way we all tend to live with with vets then there are a couple of people that maybe live by themselves but we tend to just get houses between us like there's one town that we're all just in and yeah we just go to the vet school out on the Wirral which is where Lee Hurst is we have like a big lecture theatre there where you have all your lectures and then you've got the referral hospitals and the practices and you've got more clinical skills labs out there and post-mortem rooms and sort of all those facilities. How far away is the vet school from the main campus? So you have to go under the Mersey which takes its time I think it's about 45 minutes and you have to pay the toll. When when you get out to Wirral, you sort of end up going back to Liverpool less and less just because it's a bit of a pain really. So, okay, from what you're saying, it sounds like you need a car to get around? I think probably 90% at least of people have a car or they'll just go with their housemates to uni. To be fair, a few people cycle, like there's quite a nice cycle path that goes pretty much directly from our town to uni and that would only take maybe 20 minutes. Okay. But it's very muddy, so in the winter <laughs> and it's dark, you kind of just want to um, get in the car. So dark now, isn't it? I know it's horrible. It's dark so, early. <laughs> so first three years is in a city, so you can walk from your accommodation to the uni. Is that right? Yeah, I think well, definitely in first year when you're in student accommodation, and then depend. We sort of have two main. Bobby, stop. We have two <laughs> two main residential areas. So we have um, a spot that's just ten minutes walk from campus that a few people live. And then I'd say the main area is quite near to the student villages that I was talking about. Mm-hmm. And that's like 20, 25 minute bus okay. journey. It is walkable if you get up early enough, but most yep. people just need to get a bus pass because then you can okay. use that on the site as well because you have like 24 hour bus and you can just use yeah. that to get home after. It's quite cheap. Fair enough. And how much does accommodation usually cost? First year, I think I paid £140 a week 
for a double ensuite. It ranges, I think you can get it a bit cheaper than that. Obviously all the prices have sort of increased over the years. Mm, yeah. It does range up to about £180 a week for the new accommodation. Mm-hmm. Once you get into private accommodation, I think I paid between 80 and £90 a week in second and third year. So good. Um, that's, in, that's including bills. Um, Liverpool is like dead cheap to live in and then once you get up to the Wirral it's even better like I think we pay £57 a week what? Not oh my so god that's crazy a week. yeah it's really good that's like half my what I'm paying <laughs> Cool, that's really useful to know. I guess the main takeaway I get is it's really fun and nice to live in Liverpool and cheap as well. So <laughs> there's a lot of points. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of good points there. Do you find that you don't have enough time? Is that why you don't do the societies or you just have other interests outside of the university societies? I think I did sort of feel like I didn't have enough time. Like I love going to the gym, so I I do that five or six times a week and I feel like by the time you've got home from uni, you've done that, you've eaten and you're kind of just like, oh what? Like, I want to go to sleep. Yeah, especially yep. going out a few times a week as well, which just gets a bit. <laughs> like too much um, I know a lot of people that are far more organised than me and better timekeepers that they manage to get involved with loads of stuff like very busy so it's definitely doable I think it just depends how much spare time you want and how much sort of yeah. true relaxing or socialising time you want so lastly is there any topic that you want to talk about or maybe talk a little about your career and aspirations or what you wish you knew before you applied to vet school if you could tell your younger self okay so career aspirations I'm just so unsure I went to uni thinking I wanted to be an equine vet and then I'm now pretty sure I want to be a fully mixed vet in Scotland somewhere just somewhere I think even now I'd say most people in my year are probably like oh no I don't really know what I want to do there's a lot of pressure to have a job lined up and I know some people do at this stage but it's just already what <laughs> yeah but it's just I mean it's great if you do and you've been to a practice for EMS and you're like oh I really want to work here yeah. and you know have offered you something that's great but it's definitely not necessary and you can take as long as you need and maybe have some time off after yep. final it might be nice to have a few weeks so something I have been involved with while I've been a vet student is IVSA which is the International Veterinary Student Association it's a global association and I'm president of IVSA UK and Ireland so I started off as the public health officer three years ago and then I moved on to president and it's just something I wish I'd been involved with from year one because honestly like the opportunity is incredible we focus really on travel we organise group exchanges at every university when I was in third year we went to Milan for four or five days to the vet school we were hosted Mm -hmm. by vet students and they showed us around and we had some great activities and nights out and we had activities at the vet school like parasitology tutorial and a tour and I remember it was so weird they walked a horse into the lecture theatre like they just had this horse brought this horse in and we were like doing stuff with that Um, that's safe That was so weird, but it's just like that's just normal for them. It's Ooh. great to see other vet schools at other countries. And then they came here, and we sort of arranged activities for them. We took them to Ghetto Golf, took them out for dinner, and to Chester Zoo, and just sort of things British things, you know. Yeah, so we we try and make it so that each uni has one exchange per year. Mm-hmm. Some unis manage more. Like I think RVC had three last year. Oh wow! And then also we do so every year there is a congress and a symposium globally. Mm-hmm. Last year congress was in Croatia. I went to that. It was amazing. Like you have students from all over the world and we all get together and we have sort of like big meetings like general assemblies and constitutional and bylaw amendments are made but Mm -hmm. also it's like an amazing social experience we have an auction like a formal dinner a white t-shirt party it's too much to even remember like it's just (laughs) make so many friends like it sounds so cheesy but genuinely like i've got friends all over the world now and it's just like the, the best society honestly so yeah I wish that I had known about it from year one and could have got involved sooner so to future people applying or in first year join IVSA definitely join IVSA <laughs> yeah join IVSA and IVSA is what every vet school has right yeah and the way it is at the moment is that because our sort of national vet student organisation the Association of Veterinary Students mm-hmm. AVS, AVS. Mm-hmm. Your mem- your, yeah your AVS membership pays for your IVSA membership so everyone is already a member and um, so it makes sense to utilize that and get involved definitely any advice you would give to your younger self about applying to vet school i think just not to panic like having not got a place first time 
overwhelmed. I just, I was so distraught and I genuinely thought that no one would want me because I had been rejected already. Um, so I think just being confident that as long as you work for it and you you sort of meet the necessary requirements, like I got more work experience, I practiced my interview skills and as long as you, you know, do these things and you will get there, it might just take you a bit longer and like I'm all the happier now for having my year out and, you know, like saving up and getting a bit like a, a year's more sort of knowledge about life and what I wanted to do, like it, it didn't do me any harm so yeah. I'm here, that's all that matters. And you're gonna graduate soon. Ah! Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I wish you all the best in the next few months. Thank you so much for agreeing to spend time to talk about Liverpool Vet School. Thank you so much, bye. Hey, so I hope you found that video useful. If it is, give us a thumbs up. Be sure to check out the other interviews with Callum from Edinburgh Vet School, me from Nottingham Vet School, and Gemma from Surrey Vet School. And as always, if you have any questions about vet school things, leave them in the comments and see you in the next video. Take care, stay safe, bye.